How's it going crew? This is Happy Days and welcome back to Happy's Top Tips and Tricks for Terraria 1.3. So in the last episode we looked at some neat things you can do in Terraria and at the end of the video I invited you to share some of the awesome things that you've discovered with everyone in the next video. So in this episode we'll be featuring some of my tips as well as some of yours. And remember, veteran players, that there are new people to Terraria all the time. So if you hear a tip that you already know, remember some new players may not have heard it yet. Now with that said, let's get started. Okay, first tip we're going to be looking at is the infinite bait trick using the flower boots. The flower boots are a new item in Terraria 1.3 that make flowers grow after you wherever you walk. And today we're going to be taking advantage of that using a little trick. So there's two ways to do this. One's fully AFKable, the other one needs you to jump around occasionally. So the golden bug net, which is a fishing reward, if you swing it when you're standing on the right piece of grass, it'll actually break the grass and regrow it at the same time. And your character will catch any uh, critters that spawn, so buggies, sluggies, so I'm using jungle because they tend to spawn a bit quicker. You see we just caught a buggy then, and a grubby, and it's super easy. You could weigh your mouse button down and no problems. The other way you can do this is by using something like a yo-yo, and I actually find this way a lot quicker, but you can't quite AFK it. So basically, you use the yo-yo, you can see it's spawning heaps and heaps of bugs, and then you just gotta jump down and catch them yourself. Okay, the next tip was sent in by Gagecraft, and it's actually using the sawmill to generate money early in the game. So, wood is free, and it's pretty much everywhere, you just chop it down, and using the sawmill, you can make the item the weapon rack, for 10 wood. Um, and basically, you can sell them to NPCs for 10 silver. Now that's a really great conversion ratio um, because the sawmill doesn't care what type of wood you use. So you know you can be using boreal, rich mahogany, whatever. So you can pretty much just get a stack of wood and make heaps of weapon racks and then sell it to a good old merchant for quite a bit of cash. This next tip was sent in by Samundra B and it's for fighting the destroyer using a little bit of a trick so you're nice and safe. And sorry, Samandra, I always say your last name wrong, so I'm just going to say B. <laughs> okay, so to those of you that are new to hard mode, the destroyer can be pretty tricky. But the first part of this trick involves building a box off the ground that's 40 blocks high. Um, and the reason for this is the destroyer is one mob that can't fly. Most bosses have flight or really quick movement, and it allows them to get to you, but not the destroyer. So we're going to make a nice box, nice and high off the ground. There we go. And I know you probably won't have the fisher on mount when you're up to this, but you can just use platforms. Okay, then what we want to do is actually make a couple of platforms. There we go, just about 50 will do. And what we're going to do is make an area where we can shoot at the destroyer. And then we're going to put some walls on the side to keep us safe from probes and some more platforms on the top. Beautiful. And then, just to test it, we're going to shoot our storm bow into the air. Beautiful. Okay, the night time is here, so let's get this fight started. Alright, so you can see the destroyer on the mini-map there. And it's trying to fly up here, and look, occasionally it might get this high. But uh, most of the time it's going to miss you, or you can just easily step out of its way. And you can see the Stormbow is doing a really nice job against the probes and the destroyer itself. Now, if you've made holy arrows, which are made out of just simple things from the Halo biome, you can see how quick uh, it really ramps up the damage. And all you need is pixie dust and a unicorn horn, and 200 arrows, and you can make 200 holy arrows. Our next tip is an awesome thing in Terraria, and not many things work like this, but fishing crates are unusual. And what actually happens, uh, fishing crates loot tables change, depending if you're in pre-hard mode or hard mode. So what a lot of clever players are doing is saving all their crates in pre-hard mode, so they're fishing away, and then as soon as they get to hard mode, they're just opening up all of their treasure, and making it go everywhere and having a lot of fun doing it. But the cool thing about it is that you actually get hard mode ores. 
uh, that drop out, which is really cool because it actually saves you from having to break the altars and actually spread more uh, crimson corruption or hello around your world. Uh, so it's a really cool thing to do. Um, you usually get enough ores if you've got enough crates uh, to actually, yeah, make a new set of armor or at least a pickaxe. And it's a super cool trick and I can't even see myself under all the loot. <laughs> so you definitely have to try it out. So just save all your crates, start of hard mode, open them all up and you'll get all the new ores and things like that. This next tip is one of my favorites that I've been using for quite a while. And uh, it's something that when set up properly is really useful for fighting bosses in invasions that you've already fought once or twice and you're just trying to get all the items out of it. And basically it's the mechanic in Terraria where if you use a, a mob statue like a slime or a crab statue, it damages you repeatedly. But what happens is when you're fighting things like bosses, it actually makes the slime damage you over a boss. Um, so let's see it in action. And as you can see, the bosses are going absolutely crazy all over the screen, but we are completely safe in our little box while the traps work away and kill all the bosses for us. Um, you can also use summons for this sort of thing as well, but make sure you use summons that can't glitch through blocks or phase through blocks. Things like Stardust Dragon and um, Sharknadoes are not that good for this because they'll actually kill the slime. And once the slime is dead, you are in trouble. <laughs> but this is a super simple thing to set up. And if you're interested in learning a little bit more about it, it's a bit too much to put in this video, but I've put a link in the description, annotations on screen now. If you want to learn how to build this little arena, uh, it's super, super easy. Okay, everyone. Thanks as always for watching another episode of my Happy's Top Tips and Tricks for Terraria 1.3. Remember, if you want to be included in the fun, all you've got to do is leave your own tip trick glitch or suggestion in the comments and it might be featured in the next video with your name on screen alrighty time for some shout outs as always and if you're new to our channel and you don't know how shout outs work I've actually got the description in the description <laughs> a description in a description whoa inception <laughs> all right our first one is from Gabrielle Fennec as a party and they've asked me to say, oh, it's a tongue twister. I haven't had one of these for a while. Oh my gosh, I'm going to try my best. <gasps> it's the woodchuck one. <gasps> if a woodchuck could chuck wood... <sighs> I can't do them. <laughs> Too hard. Oh, thanks, Gabrielle, though. <laughs> Our next one is from Mindflip. And they've asked me to say in a Serena voice, I shall summon even the most powerful cookies. Yaren won't stand a chance. <laughs> Thanks, Mindflip. <laughs> I think my Serena voice changes every time. <laughs> uh, our next one is from Alex Lussier. And the boss me see in a Yaren voice. I am Batman and I need cookies. <laughs> uh, I think Yaren thinks he's a bit of a superhero. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. Our next one is from Captain Topher. Captain Topher? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've said that right. And they've asked me to see any yarn voice. Give me cookies. <laughs> Thanks, Captain. That was awesome. And the last one is from Osama, no, Osama Kalash. And they've asked me to see a skeleton merchant voice. Oh, I haven't haven't talked in a uh, skeleton merchant before. Anyway, they've asked me to see. Who wanna buy a bone torch? Don't ask where they came from. <laughs> oh, thanks, that was awesome. Alright guys, leave a like if you've enjoyed this video. It takes you about half a second to click that thumbs up. And it makes me really happy. It's like giving me a cookie. And why not and try to do something different? Throw a cupcake at the like button. It's all good. It's all a goer. Uh, keep those comments coming. Either shout out suggestions, comments for the next video. It's up to you. I just love chatting to you all in the comments and you guys know I'm pretty much on there each and every day talking to as many of you as I can. If you haven't subscribed yet, click that little HD icon in the bottom right corner. You won't be disappointed. And we are just about to have our 75,000 subscriber celebration, which includes a game giveaway. So make sure you don't miss out on that. All right, here's the most important part. As always, you'll stay happy and I'll see you soon. This is Happy Days signing out. See ya. And that means that ectoplasm will be, yeah, getting farmed nicely. And you can see that was dead easy to set up that. So the mobs can cruise up the sides. The mimics can get in, which is one of the main things. Yeah, we've got lots of good loot. 
just, just. Oh, he's got 3,000 health! He's only got 3,000! 